Welcome back YouTubers. Thank you for following our journey and thanks for all your likes. Today we are going to be getting the Virgin 8 donor car started up. And we're a little bit nervous because this thing has been standing for about five years, the same as the wide body. And it has not been started up in all that time. We're going to give you guys some good practice tips on how to get a car go in with hopefully out destroying the engine when it's been standing for so long so without further ado let's get this thing pulled out and let's see if we can get it fired up so the battery's flat on this car so we're gonna have to push it out one of you's gonna have to be the brake so we'll do it this way ip dip 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 you are not it right it's you Seth. get in the driver's seat Get to the back of the car, we're going to push. When we say brake, you brake, yeah? Right. Two, three. Brake! 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 Press the brake! Brake! Which pedal are you pressing? That was clearly not the brake. <laughs> Top tip number one, because the engine hasn't moved for like five years, we're not going to take a chance on the oil and we're going to change the oil just in case because what happens when engine oil is sitting for a long time, you've got bits of petrol in there that basically break the oil down and the oil can't do its job as good as it should. To try and avoid uh, the engine damaging itself inside without getting proper protection we're going to change the oil so we've just got ourselves some cheap oil here because we're not going to be driving this car on the road or anything like that we're going to uh, we're going to do another oil change before obviously we're ready to do some sort of tuning and things in the uh, wide body uh, we're just going to put this cheap stuff in to make sure the engine's protected and lubricated properly and we're going to cheat on the oil change. We're not going to uh, do the conventional drop in the sump. We're going to use the power of suction. And we're going to suck the old oil out. Can I do that? Because I won't crash. Yeah. So that didn't quite go to plan. After about 20 minutes we've got about half a litre of oil out, probably because it's too cold and it's too thick to be sucked out. So back to the old fashioned way of taking the sump plug out. Just to give you guys an idea of just how long this car's been standing, I mean, look at the uh, rust on the sump. And also, I've just tried to get the oil filter off and it is absolutely seized on. Um, and it looks like a, a genuine Subaru unit. Uh, I hope it hasn't been on there from the factory. I hope it's not the original one. Because I think this car's done about 40,000 kilometres, so it should have had a, an oil change by now. But just whilst I'm under here, I want to show you guys one of the main differences between the twin scroll setup and a standard Impreza setup. You can see how the manifold is equal length there, uh, which is 
different to most Subaru setups and this gives this car a distinctive noise which sounds more like a conventional four cylinder inline engine rather than a flat four uh, which is pretty cool What are you doing under there? I mean guys, I don't know if you can see what he's doing Let me just get a bit of a zoom in So that's what he's doing right now Gotta try and get this oil filter off but it's so tight against the exhaust It's proven a little bit difficult You can see what he's doing we've had to like beat it up to get it out god it's so tight ah i'm getting covered in oil oh that looks bad ah. <laughs> i think i'll just let it drain out for a bit <laughs> that's it... like that's like wheel of fortune on do perfect that is so unfortunate Good, uh, good practice tip number two, whenever you're putting an oil filter back on uh, these Subaru EG engines it's always good practice to fill the oil filter up as much as you can before you put it back on the car uh, and it kind of helps avoid any dry running when you first start them up or anything like that because the oil's already in the oil filter so that you're not going to get any sort of gaps or anything like that. Something I This always, is good advice guys, this is good advice. Something I always do. See those bubbles like coming out? See them? Yeah, let me just show it's you settling guys. settling down. So all the oil's just oh, settling no. down. Look at that guys. That is just, wow. Mind blowing. No, not mind blowing. I mean, it's just putting an oil foot on. So it's not really mind blowing. I mean, this no, is definitely not good because it's so tight up against there that it's not. Um, but I'm gonna try to give you the best look from where I am. Right, we seem to have a problem. The exhaust is so tight up against where the um, oil filter goes that we're not able to get the oil filter on. Wah, wah, wah. I mean that is so Good tight. Guys. I'm just gonna pick up this armor. I didn't know that. What the That is loud guys. Oh mom truth will the filter come on now but yeah anything could happen so best of luck uh, I hope we can get the oil filter on but I mean who knows so it kind of makes sense now why it looked like the original oil filter was still on it looks like at some point this car somebody's modified or repaired this uh, exhaust manifold um, and what they've done is made it so tight that you can't get the oil filter um, on or off next to the exhaust so what I'm gonna have to do now is drop the manifold off uh, drop the exhaust header off and um, try and get the filter on and just get the um, manifold back on to try and start the car and then we'll just have to address the exhaust issue once we've got the engine out of the car
I'm hoping we can just move this manifold enough to get the uh, oil filter in there. So let's just hope that it works. Ooh. That looks like a good sign. My God, this is so tight. I mean, so, so tight. Right, she's on. Whew. And we get this cleaned up and tightened up. That's it. She's up. So literally, after the oil change from hell, we've got the car back down, we've got the oil in, uh, we've got a battery on, we've got life, so we're going to give it a try, but there's one last thing that I'm going to do, which is my number three good <coughs> practice tip, and that is to follow me, what we're going to do is we're going to crank the engine over without it's starting so that uh, we can get good oil pressure and oil can circulate around the engine before uh, before we start it up so that it doesn't cause any unnecessary damage so the trick to do this is follow me just gonna pull the boot whoa I forgot there was no spoiler on that <laughs> So on this version 8 car you have an ignition amplifier in the boot here um, which is just round the back there uh, I'm going to disconnect this now hopefully this will kill the um, the fuel to the engine and it will um, let us crank it over without starting up so that we can achieve the uh, desired effect there we go plug is out okay so we're going to crank this until we've got oil pressure oh right round two let's try again come on oil pressure Come on, aisle pressure light. I think we'll just give it a go. Right, I'm happy we've got oil pressure. Let's give it a go. Hopefully, we've got enough battery life to get this thing going. What do you think? Is it going to start, guys? Yeah. Let's try again. Oh. <laughs> 
We've got oil pressure, but I think we have got bad fuel in this thing. So uh, we've got the car going. One thing we kind of forgot is about the fuel. We've got the fuel five years old as well, so and we'll be back next time. We'll get some fresh fuel in this. And guys, and we'll it, get it, it smells like a burnt smell. So. And we'll get it running. Uh, we'll we'll get it running properly. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon. See.